Motivation, fools! You got to be motivated. If you're not motivated, or if you're just one of them guys like, uh, I feel like doing some work today, or uh, I don't feel like doing nothing today, you are never going to go anywhere. I don't care if you're trying to build a big business, or if you're just going to stay solo and do your own thing. I don't care what you're doing. If you are not motivated, you are not going to do shit. You are going to be a... You're, you're going to be another one of them scum suckers that lives off my freaking taxes and sits home and collects your free phone um, and do absolutely shit with your life and live off of everybody else. Hell, you're going to vote for freaking Bernie Sanders. Let's just be honest. But, uh, it, oh, oh, it drives me crazy. The point I'm making in this video is I made a video a while back and I was telling all you guys about another guy I was helping out to start his landscape company and I sold him a trailer and um, and I sat down and made out a business plan with him and tried to help him out and all this stuff I sent him a bunch of work things like that well he's not very motivated to the point to where he's not he's not really going out and getting work things like that he's waiting for it all to come to him and I said if you're waiting for it all to come to you dude you're never gonna go anywhere you're never gonna do anything I said if nothing else go on Vistaprint have some cheap magnets made and put them on the side of your truck you know that's that's been my number one way of business I'll, of course my trucks look like billboards I've had them all lettered you guys have seen them in there you know they're big decals down the side but I said if nothing else and you can't afford all it yet go get some cheap magnets made and at least do that no you won't even do that so, the guy that I told you guys about in my last video, I've been helping on the weekends mow that big pharmaceutical company with, he's needed some help. So, he's had this kid working with him um, to help him out. And from what he tells me, he says, every time I tell this kid to do something, he does the complete opposite. Or he calls me a hundred times a day, can't figure this out, can't figure that out. It's just basic, common sense little shit. He said, and he's driving me up a damn wall. He, I don't understand why he can't figure this stuff out. He's going to houses to mow them that he's told not to go to, um, things like that. Then he wants to bring in other people to help him um, when he's got like seven or eight lawns to do for a day. An entire day, seven, eight lawns to do for a day. Anyone can do that. And, uh, and he wants to bring in other people to help him. And he says, I'll pay him out of my own pocket, this and that. And... The kid just has no drive, I guess, from, from what this guy's telling me. So I guess he was supposed to work today, never showed up, says he has to stay home and help clean the house for a surprise birthday party for his mother this week, his mother-in-law this weekend, which is Saturday, and today's Tuesday. He's like, I told the kid he's done, never come back, they, you know, he's not working them anymore. Um... So, the, my point is drive. If you don't have the drive, you don't have the motivation, you don't have the push, you are never going to go anywhere. I don't care if you know absolutely nothing about the business, if you know nothing about lawn care. You will pick it up, you will learn it, you will get everything done if you have the drive and the motivation to do it. You will learn it because you'll have that mindset where you refuse to fail. And that's exactly how it should be. I've seen guys that know absolutely nothing about lawn care that have knocked out this business and, and built a big business just because they knew what they what they wanted and they were goal oriented and they refused to lose. They refused to give up and they built a great company because of it. If you don't have that motivation, you don't have that drive, and you don't have that willingness, that eagerness to just make it happen, you're not going to go anywhere. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care. I don't care about none of it. You got to have it, or you're never going to go anywhere. So, you know, any of you guys that have that push, that have that drive, that motivation, if you don't know everything you need to know about the business don't worry about it it will come to you you will learn it just refuse to give up and make it freaking happen and you guys will knock it out and that's my lesson for right now some of my properties i've been to this week today's tuesday some of my properties i've been to this week um are turning brown already and like the last one i just went to didn't even need weed whack and they fer they have their lawn fertilized i mowed it real good and blew it off but man it's uh it's really weird if we don't get some rain 
soon. We're, we're supposed to have thunderstorms all day Thursday, and I hope we do. That means I'll be mowing on Saturday, but what are you going to do? You know, it's, uh, it's crazy. I just, I can't believe it's the last day of May, and we're already having issues with yards turning brown. That never happens. I mean, it's been really weird. It's like, It's like the uh, first two weeks of April, all it did was rain. It never stopped. And I was like, you know, I was talking to a couple of buddies of mine that do the same thing. And I told them, I said, you know, if we don't get some rain soon. Or I, I told them at that, at that point, I said, if we don't, uh, if it doesn't stop raining soon, we're going to be in trouble come the first cuts. Everything's going to be like a foot and a half tall. But uh, that wasn't the case at all. It was actually the second week of April. Well, yeah, and it was like the first. What the hell am I trying to say? It was the beginning of the third week in April that we started doing our first cuts. And in my area, we usually don't do our first cuts till like the beginning of the third week in May. So we got a whole extra month of mowing. And we've had a little bit of rain here and there, but not that much. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's um, if we don't get some rain soon, some of these lawns aren't even going to need cut. So it's it's just really weird that uh, you know up here in my area, you know usually we're still double cutting or bagging everything. Um, which that's what I've been doing for the last four weeks is double cutting or bagging everything, um, just to keep them down as much as I can. But now, now stuff's drying out. I'm just mowing over it, you know, mowing stuff up, keeping it cut at a nice height. You know, that's it. It's really weird that it's like that already. I can't believe it. But uh, I guess every area is different. Parts of Texas, from what I saw in the news, are just getting their ass handed to them with nasty weather. So I guess it all depends on where you live. We'll see what happens here now. I'm gonna go to my next couple. The next two that I have to do, even in even in August, um, July and August in my area is usually when I move a few properties over to buy weekly because it dries right out and they're just not growing. But even in August, these next two properties that I have, they're uh, they grow like crazy. You know, I, I think there's maybe three or four weeks out of the entire season where I don't either bag or double cut those lawns. Um, one of them fertilizes and one don't. They're right around the block from each other. Um, and they're pretty big lawns. I filmed them before. Um, so, I don't know. I guess we'll see what those look like today. Um, I had to bag it again last week. So, we're going on like three weeks now with no rain. So... We'll see what happens when I get to these lawns. I'll find out if uh, it'd actually be nice to not have to double cut or bag them for one week. Uh, I'll take it. Um, but uh, I guess we'll see what happens when we get there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but check these two girls out on the side of the throughway. One's with a walk behind Toro and the other one's with a weed whacker. And they're knocking it out over there. All right, well, it's another lovely day. We're going to go out and mow some more grass. It's windy, and it's like a high of 64 right now. But it's supposed to go up like 78 degrees or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, I was reminded of something the other day. I was out mowing, and when I got done mowing, I checked my phone. Apparently, I had a missed call, and there was a voicemail on there. And the voicemail said, tell the guy that makes the YouTube videos that I'm going to straighten out his effing teeth for him. First of all, whoever freaking called me is an idiot because they called me from a restricted number. So if they're really trying to portray to me that they were some type of tough guy, they would have called me from a regular number so I can call them back and talk to them about it. But uh, he didn't. He called from a restricted number. So... Whatever, I made an Instagram thing about it, making fun of the situation to show how little it actually bothers me. Um, 
but uh you know that's the kind of crap that people like Greg had to deal with and all the haters when you guys make YouTube videos um, so I mean that's that's just the way it goes I guess and you deal with people like that but for any of you guys that experience that and have stuff going on like that and deal with people like that don't let it bother you I laughed it off I made a joke about it and I actually made a YouTube video or uh, Instagram video like I said picking on the situation it was just retarded, like it didn't bother me at all. But uh, but I just wanted to mention that to let you guys know that you know if you experience stuff like that, blow it off, man. Ninety percent of people in this world, probably ninety-five percent of people in this world, that will call you up and say stuff like that on your phone. You'll never actually see these people in your life. You will never experience any type of anything with them. So don't let them bother you. Um, I don't. Anyway. So we're gonna get to mowing. Last week was a hell of a week. Um, I I made a video a week and a half ago, I believe, and because uh, I hadn't made one in a while, and a lot of things going on with the mowers breaking down and stuff like that. And you guys will, uh, if you go back and watch the last um, entry of Lawn Care Journals, you'll see what I was talking about. But my plan was to put some more videos out last week, and then I had my butt handed to me. Literally, literally, I uh, I woke up and I had a little bit of pain in my back. I'm like, what the heck is that? And I figured I slept wrong or something. So I went to my first two lawns and they're back to back, you know, right next to each other. And I weed whacked them both first. And I started to feel a little more of that pain. Um, and then I got on the mower and I started mowing it. And uh, I was feeling it again, even just moving the controls back and forth on the stander. I was feeling it again. I'm like, what in the hell is that? So then I got down them and I put the backpack blower on and I started, you know, moving my arm back and forth with the tube blowing off the driveways and stuff. It was so damn bad it almost dropped me right to my knees. Um, anytime I took a deep breath or anything, it felt like somebody was stabbing me with a screwdriver. So I called my wife and I, you know, to see if she was with any patients and she wasn't. So I had her meet up with me and uh, it turns out I tore muscles underneath my shoulder blade. Um, a few years back, I had bronchitis real bad, and I coughed real hard. And when I coughed, I actually fractured two ribs. I didn't even know you could do that. Um, but when I went to the doctor, and they did the, the x-rays, and then an MRI, and stuff like that, it turns out that's what happened. Um, and this is exactly what it felt like. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, I don't remember coughing or anything. But I have been sneezing like crazy for the last three weeks. I'll be 38 in October. I've never had allergies in my life, but... My doctor said, you know, as you get older, you will develop more allergies. Most people do. Um, he said, so, you know, it, it's been crazy. And with it being so dry, we haven't had barely any rain. We got a little bit this weekend, a little bit yesterday, but not much at all. But with no rain, there's like so much freaking, um, there's been so much pollen everywhere. Like when I pull up to certain lawns, you can see a, like a layer of yellow just blanketing yards. And as soon as you start to mow over, it's just a dust cloud. Um, sometimes I put on those white masks just to keep from breathing it in. Because after mowing through a few of them, I, like my throat was real scratchy and I felt it. Um, but anyway, I've been sneezing like crazy. And I sneezed really hard the day before this happened. And I felt a sharp pain on this side. And uh, But then I just blew it off. So as this happened, I'm thinking more about it. I'm like, yep, that must have been what it was. So... Uh, um, so I'm like, yep, that, that, that's what caused it, and, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what caused it, so I'm still a little sore today, that was Wednesday morning, I got through like six more lawns, I mowed that big church, um, that couldn't take it anymore, it, it was just bad, it was real bad, and, uh, and I can deal with a lot of pain, man, I've broken so many bones, I've done so much stupid shit in my life, I can deal with some serious pain, um, but this was just, I don't, I don't know what the hell it was, it was just, breathing was hurting like hell. It was like a sharp stabbing pain. So I called in this one guy to help me out and he came to help me the rest of the day. And then he helped me all day Thursday. And then I told him, I said, just help, come in on Friday, help me out. I got a bunch of big properties on Fridays. Um, help me out, get me through this. And then, you know, I'll kind of take it easy over the weekend and I'll be fine. Well, he never showed up on Friday, um, which reminded me why I've gone solo so that I don't have to deal with that crap anymore. But, uh, 
So I did pick up this new property. It was on Saturday, or I looked at it Friday night and it was big and there's a lot of trimming and uh, I gave the guy a price, told him what the price would be for the first time cut because it ain't been cut. And he said two weeks since his long guy showed up, but I don't think the guy's been there all year for some of the parts. I think when he did show up, he only mowed a couple parts here and there. He did, definitely did not mow the whole thing. So I, uh, so anyway, I brought that kid did show up that next day. I said, here's your last chance, pal. So he did show up that next day and um, he helped me with it and we got it done. Um, it took us two and a half hours to weed whack and then mow and then bag this entire property. So I ended up calling the guy back yesterday. Well, I texted him and I told him, I said, listen, I said, it's definitely more trimming than, uh, than I had planned. And I apologize because once I give a price, I never change it. Never. If I have to eat it, then I eat it because it's my own screw up and I should have known better. Um, but I said, listen, you know, it's just a lot more than I planned. I said, do you have any objections to me keeping you on Saturdays? And he said, no, mow whenever you want. And uh, I figured that'd be good because if I can get a guy to help me, which I did find one, um, my niece's boyfriend is going to help me. Um, and uh, he said he's available every Saturday to help me. So he's going to help me do it. Um, but in case somebody doesn't show up any given Saturday I can still do it myself and don't have to rush because I don't have any other properties planned um, but I did also tell the guy listen I'm gonna have to bump it up it's gonna be this much more you know on a weekly basis and he said nope I can understand that he said you have a good good points he goes no problem you did a fantastic job he goes uh so absolutely do what you gotta do so so that's the case and that's that property and uh I am uh I am starting today off and like I said, it's uh, it's extremely windy. Um, the sky, an hour ago, the sky was 100% clear. There wasn't a freaking cloud in the sky. Now there's all kinds of clouds, and I think there's a 20% chance of rain throughout the day, which tells me there's an 80% chance it's not going to rain. So we're going to get through this day, and I'm going to make it happen. And my back is hurting like hell right now, but it's not too awfully bad. And we're just going to get through the day and just do it so yeah so to recap blow off the haters nobody gives a shit these people just call and waste their own time if they were tough they wouldn't call from restricted numbers um and that's about all i have to say about that and um if you guys experience any setbacks don't let them get you down man make it happen and just keep plugging away and trust me it always gets better and you will uh Black Cherry Mio, best stuff. This is really good too. It's Crystal Light Blue Raspberry. More really good stuff. Um, I keep like, there's a few down the door. I keep a bunch of them in there. And then I fill my water bottle up with cold water in the morning. And then you guys know I got that five gallon jug in the trailer. But uh, but yeah, so uh, keep plugging along. Don't let things get you down like that. Like I said, go back and watch my last entry video. I think it was six. I'm not sure, but um, go back and watch it and you guys will see all the things that have happened to me so far this year and uh, I just keep plugging away. That's what makes a business strong. The, um, guys that have uh, a business and they let the things get them down and they just throw in the towel, you know, that's what makes your business weak and that's what will fail. That makes a business come down easy. It's a lot harder for people and things to tear your business apart if you, uh, if you build it up strong and just keep plugging away. So, um, yeah, that's that. Let's uh, let's get some mowing done today. All right, guys, time for a little mowing. This property I have been mowing for this is the second year now. It is a uh, two-part property. There's this house here, which is the daughter's. The daughter is actually a disciplinary teacher at the high school that I went to, uh, at the junior high that I went to, actually. Um, that's what she is now. It's the school that my kids go to, the same one that I went to. Um, and this is her house. I do this house and her mom's house. She's never here. She's always at her mom's house um, if she's not working. But it's a nice house, nice property, nice and smooth. I can fly right through it. Um, but what I do is she does, she has this house um in the other house both fertilized um so for the first month of mowing i usually bag them both and uh 
but this is the first week I didn't have to bag it. Second week, I think. Um, but when I have to bag it for that first month, I usually cut them at three and a quarter or three and a half. Uh, everyone's area is different. Uh, the standard in my area for mowing is between three and three and a half. That's what pretty much every contractor mows at. Um, most of them mow about three and a quarter. Um, but she likes this short. So I, like right now I'm mowing it at three inches. Um, and the grass is dispersing well enough that I don't have to double cut it or bag it. Uh, the back I do have to double cut and you'll see that in a, in a minute. Um, but it's nice smooth property, nice and easy to do. Um, and they're, they've been really good customers. Um, I also plow both the driveways in the winter. Um, I believe I've filmed this one before plowing. I know I filmed the other one plowing. Um, but this, uh, real quick about the fertilizing, a lot of my customers have gone on, they've had these companies tell them they need five or six shots a year, uh, once a month fertilizing. And I've told them all that is ridiculous. They're just trying to take your money. Um, come the dry months, July and August, you have just as many brown spots as my yards that don't fertilize. The only difference is instead of two to three inches of growth in between cuts each week, you're looking at like five to eight inches is what you guys are, are doing. So you have two choices. You can save yourself some money by cutting back your fertilizing and by me not doubling your price because I have to bag it every week because I refuse to leave grass lay on a customer's yard. Um, or you can continue to have this fertilizing done that much. Your yard will be a chemical factory and you're going to pay me more. Um, and so I've only ever had one customer challenge me on that and they said why well, talk to the fertilizing company and they said that you're wrong I said oh am I okay well there's many times that I am but about this I am not um, I said I'll tell you what this year go to three shots three shots in one year instead of every month fertilizing and if your yard looks any different than it did last year other than the insane amount of growth I will pay for next year's fertilizing and they said okay that's a deal so they did it and it turned out that I was right um, so it was just overkill these ones here they just get the three shots and it's easily manageable like I said at the beginning of the year when they're getting that hard fertilizing you know right in the beginning plus all the rain it being spring uh, that's when I bag a lot but other than that just mow it up and that's it so it's nice and easy to manage all right guys this is the backyard of what you just saw um definitely greener back here there's so much shade in uh and so many trees back here you, you can see the shadow of the house that shadow is actually there a good portion of the day i've and between last year and this year um i've mowed it at different times of the day last year it was on a completely different day actually this is monday um but last year, I believe I did it on Friday. It's just the way it was set up. And they don't care what day they have it done on. So, um, But it was at a totally different time of the day uh, when I did it on that Friday. And this same shadow was still there. It's almost like the sun doesn't move. Um, but you can see it's blowing a lot of grass out right here. That back area from right about, if you look at the shadow that comes out, look all the way to the right. Um, to where the shadow stops from the house out to about that point um, it grows thick 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 right there um, so I usually either bag it or I double cut it right there which it's no big deal um, I just I, I don't like the way it looks if it's not done like that so I just go ahead and do it anyway I um, I don't charge extra for that a lot of guys have asked me in my videos do you charge extra for bagging or double cutting Okay, this is how I do it. Um, usually the first cut of the season, I'll bag it. And unless it's a really big yard, you know, I just bag it to help myself out, to, to kick off the season, to, uh, and to get the yard cut down short so I can maintain it, uh, get it in order. And I usually don't charge any extra for that. Um, if you have a really big yard and I have to do that, then you're going to get charged extra just because it's going to take me a ton of time. Um, but when it, it's growing really thick and really fast in the spring and the fall in my area, um, you can get away with some double cutting. It's really not that bad. But when you double cut, 
you're just cutting the clumps down to smaller pieces and dispersing it so that you can't see it laying there. Well, what that does is that helps the grass to break down, to decompose. And when it does that, it's actually fertilizing the lawn. So each week when you come back, that lawn is going to be thicker and thicker and thicker. And that's just how it works with this type of grass in my area. Um, so I try not to do too much double cutting. Um, if it looks like it's, it's out of control and there's a lot laying there, I'll bag it. I'll bag it and get it off the lawn. Um, and it just makes it much easier for me. I'm actually doing myself a favor. Um, but like this yard here, you just saw me mow the front. And now I'm on the back. Um, you'll see the side in a minute. Uh, is this 52 overkill for this? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, but it, it helps me to get it done quick, and it's not really a big deal. It's all wide open other than some trees and stuff. You know, there's no gates or nothing to get through, so I got the mower on the trailer. Why not use it? Um, and it does a great job. So um, you can do it if you don't have a mower this big. Don't worry about not taking on lawns, uh, certain lawns. You can mow this with anything. You can push mow this thing if you have to. Um, sometimes I just pull my 36 stander off and cut it with that just because I like to run it. Uh, it takes me a little bit longer, but not that much. Um, but last year I mowed this thing with uh, walk behinds. I've mowed it with uh, the Great Dane stander I used to have. I've mowed it I don't know how many times with the Skag Zero. Um, you guys, in some of my older videos, you've probably seen my X Mark Zero. I've mowed it with that. You can mow it with anything. Um, so just use what you got to use. And see, I'm double cutting it all right here, but just this area of it. And, uh, you know, dispersing that grass up. There wasn't too much. There was a little bit laying there, but I just didn't like the way it looked. So, and it only took me, what, not even five minutes to go over that again. Probably not even three minutes. And, uh, it looks ten times better. So, you got to actually care what you're doing. All right, you guys are probably getting sick of me talking here, but uh, this is uh, this is just a side. I, um, I speed the video up a little bit on this one here. Obviously, I'm not mowing that fast. Um, but this is just a side, just another little part to this. And uh, I don't know if you can see my truck all the way out there at the road, but, you know, that's all there was to it, to this yard. And uh, afterwards, I just walk around the house and blow all the grass out. That's by the foundation where I blew it into with the mower. And... That's it, just uh, knocking out one more. That's all there is to it. That's kind of weird. Hello, guy, just sitting in there, hanging out. Hmm. He was, uh, I was uh, trimming and I saw that and I was like, huh, what the heck's he doing there? Not moving at all. I don't know if he's injured. Doesn't really look like a baby. He's kind of big to be a baby. Um, for that time, I don't even know what type of bird it is. I'm no bird watcher, but for all you bird watchers, maybe you know. I don't know. But uh, so I just made sure every time I went around it, I blew in the other direction. I didn't want to uh, blow a bunch of grass at him. But, uh, I don't know. Pretty neat, weird little things you see when you're mowing. Okay, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six of them done. And I got, or seven of them done. And I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six left to go. It is 11.37. Not a problem. I will probably be done around 4.30 or so. Not a bad day. I only have, I don't put too many on Mondays because uh, one, it's a Monday and who wants to work that long on a Monday? <laughs> I don't. Um, I'm like Dan from Trimmers. I have a goal for each day, a financial goal, how much money I want to make each day. And uh, just like him, my goal is the same amount as his, actually. So if you're curious to what that is, uh, check out his videos. Dan makes some killer videos. Um, but every single day, I more than pass that goal uh, with the lawns that I have. So I, um, I made sure of that just so that if one of them drops out here or there, I lose one, 
um, I can still make that go without scrambling to find another lot to replace it. If I do get another one to replace it, then, you know, that's just bonus, but I will still always make that goal. Um, and that's good enough for me. Can I make more? Hell yeah, I can make a lot more. I did all the years I had my employees, but um, I'm very comfortable with where I'm at, and it works for me. So, um, that's what I do. But, uh, and besides, on Mondays, I have sometimes, I have a lot of bigger properties, like the one I made in that last video, you guys, uh, you guys saw me mowing. That was a pretty big one. Um, at least half my properties on a Monday are that size, and some of them, the rest of them, are just a little smaller than that one. So they're all pretty good sized properties, and doing them by myself, you know, sometimes they have to be bagged, or sometimes they have to be double cut. Uh, you get a really bad one that has to be double cut and then bagged because otherwise it just keeps clogging up the bagger So a lot of things come into play um, But that's just what works for me, and that's how I do it. So um, It's good that I can meet my goal without killing myself every day. So that's a good thing Let's mow some more grass Well, there's another one done um that backyard is pretty big, but I have to mow it with a 36 because 52 won't fit in there. When I used to roll around with the skag with the 48 inch deck, I could just barely squeeze in that back gate and get it done. But not the 52. So I mow it with the 36, which doesn't take that much longer. That 36 flies. I can't go that fast because the backyard's pretty bumpy and it won't look right when I get done cutting it. So I just take my time. It's no big deal. Get it done, make it look nice. It beats the hell out of pushing there. Push mowing a yard that size would suck. Push mowing's not that bad of a deal, but when it gets super hot out, it starts to get real annoying real quick and it takes a lot longer so like I said I am above my goal every day if I had to the yards that I do with the 36 that I can't get my 52 in if I had to push mow those yards I would not be able to do as many yards as I do in a day because it would just take too long to do. So, I can do it with the 36, slow down a little bit, make them look real nice, and uh, but still knock them out a lot faster than I would with a push mower and not kill myself at the same time. And be able to get done as many lawns as I want to to meet my goals. So, that's it. All right, guys, there's another one done. Um, here, I'll show you. It's this one here. Remember I filmed this view before. Covers all that, goes there, there's a little part in front of the house, there's a big area behind the house, and all of that. That's the one I filmed for you, I believe in the last one, in Long Care Journal 6. Um, but yeah, that one's done. This is my second year on that one. That guy's a really nice guy. He uh, He's only here in the summer and then he goes to Florida for the winter. I think he goes to Carolina sometimes. He's got a brother out west. He goes out there. He goes all over. He's not even that old. I think he's in his mid to late 40s or something. I don't know. Maybe he's older. I don't know. Um, but uh, he usually has me cut it up until about the end of July. And then he takes it over for August because it doesn't grow that much. Instead of me switching it to bi-weekly. Um, he just cuts it like twice probably bi-weekly during the uh, during August and then in September he goes back to Florida and I take it back over then um, which is not bad and last year I took it back over in September and I mowed it right up until Thanksgiving like a lot of my other properties so I actually would prefer to just keep that bi-weekly cut in August but I don't know um, I've had this price the same for two years I took it last year when I was really needing a couple new accounts so I took it for the same price the last guy did it for. Um, and I should have jacked it up, but I didn't. Um, so this year I'm definitely going to raise it up. Or next year, I mean. I'm definitely going to raise it up. Um, and I'm going to tell him that. 
when uh, when he sends me the email or calls me or texts me or whatever, telling me that uh, telling me to come August uh, to stop cutting for now or come the end of July to stop cutting for now. I'm gonna tell him like, okay, well this is the last year that I'm doing that. Next year we either go to bi-weekly in August or that's the only option I'm gonna give you. You have to find someone else. Um, and by the way, your new price is gonna be this. So, which I don't know, he might jump on it, he might not. Uh, if he does, he's gonna have to find someone else to do it because uh, I really need to make more money on this deal. Um, but I'll still be fair and reasonable. Uh, that's the case. 